What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Hybrid Network and yet another Dragon Ball discussion video. Today this is something that's been on my mind for a while ever since the roster for the Universe 7 team was released for the upcoming Universal Survival Arc of Dragon Ball Super. It's a team that's made up of some very interesting choices, some obvious and others not so much, and it compiles a list of fighters that I think have what it takes to actually represent their universe and to save it from the destruction. But from what I've seen online, a lot of people don't seem to agree with that sentiment. In particular, people seem to have a big problem with the inclusion of characters like Krillin, Tien Shinhan, and even Master Roshi. Now I guess from a surface level this is perfectly understandable. Power-wise, humans have really fallen short to the other species that have dominated dominated the series for quite some time, and it's usually been framed in a way that seems to indicate that humans are just incapable of reaching the level of power that the other species have obtained. This is where I think the move is a bold one, and I think it's a move that's chosen to honor the old school roots of the Dragon Ball series. If it really all came down to power, then there'd really be no need to factor in other members of the universe, because Goku and Vegeta could just tank everybody. You might as well have just chosen Bulma to be a contender, because either Goku or Vegeta would be able to make it to the final round anyway. Sure, you'd want to choose people who at least have some chance of not dying, but at the end of the day, it'd just come down to the two Super Saiyan Blues. But I don't think this arc is meant to focus on pure strength. Or, at the very least, I hope not. Dragon Ball Z had started this trend where it mostly just came down to who was stronger, and if you were paler in comparison by just a bit, you were finished. Dunzo, kaput, Zinsky. Skill just didn't seem like a big factor anymore, and it was only in relation to heightening one's own power level, and that's where I think this new arc might be leaning towards some different types of fights. Obviously, characters like Roshi and Tien Shinhan aren't the strongest guys around, not with the aliens walking about, but what makes them special is their particular ability abilities and cleverness. Roshi probably can't win in a fist fight, this is true, but he sure as hell can outsmart his opponents and use their own strength against them. Not to mention that being as old as he is and as wise as he is, Roshi still has the knowledge to help the others figure out their best strategies and points of attack. I mean, he's not just a lecherous old man after all, he was the foremost martial arts master for a long, long time. I think that he would know a thing or two about strategy in the ring. Not to mention Tian Shinhan's capabilities as a fighter of the utmost discipline and strategy. This is a guy that knows how to keep calm even in the most dire of situations. He knows how to keep his head in a fight that could be out of his league and still make moves that can put him ahead of the game. Just look at his fight with second form Cell. Sure, he didn't do a huge amount of damage to the guy, but you know what he did? He did a strategic move that allowed Android 18 and allowed Android 16 to get away without getting absorbed. It was strategy, pure and simple. His aim wasn't to kill Cell, it was just to buy time, and by that point, he really nailed his role. Sure, it may not be as noble as some of the other fighters, but Tian Shinhan shows that he's not completely useless. He has his own capabilities, he has his own strategic advantages over the others. Then there's Krillin, who is without a doubt the strongest human, and if there's any indication why he deserves to be on the team power-wise, we just look back to episode 76 of Dragon Ball Super. Krillin as a character finds himself at a a moment where he faces the fears that plagued him for so long, and he summons that inner strength within himself to come out on top and banish those fears once and for all. Krillin reaches deep inside of himself, and even though all the villains that they're fighting so far are just terrifying and they're just bringing up all of these painful memories about his many deaths and his many failures, Krillin steps up to the plate and even manages to get the win in the Forest of Terror. This is basically just Krillin coming into his own, realizing his fighting spirit. The episode is Krillin regains his fighting spirit, I believe, so this just says volumes about Krillin as a character and as a fighter. He's not merely a side character, he's a character that's stuck by the Z Fighter through pretty much everything, and no matter how scary it all was, he still had the strength of character to try and stand alongside gods, so to leave him out of this grand multiverse tournament would be doing him a huge disservice, especially in light of all the character growth that he recently went through. And you know, finally, there's something just wonderfully thematic about the idea that these characters, who have been present in Goku's life, and an hour since the beginning of this series with Dragon Ball have a stake in the battle for their universe. They've been there since the beginning, and it goes to show that perhaps, finally, Toei is looking to the legacy of Dragon Ball and seeking to do much more with these guys than simply having them as background characters, because they deserve so much more than that. They are powerful warriors in their own right. To simply write them off based solely on power level in comparison to two gods, mind you, just seems ridiculous when you consider just how important they are to the story of Dragon Ball in its entirety. They deserve to be there just as much as any other fighter, and to discredit them based solely on power level, in my eyes, misses the entire original point of the series in general. 
But anyways, guys, what do you all think? Do you think the Universe 7 team is perfect, or do you think that you have a better one in mind? And do you agree with the discussion brought up here in the video? Let me know down below. I'm actually very interested to see what you guys have to say. And make sure you subscribe to the Hybrid Network to stay up to date on all of our videos as they come out. Thanks for listening, guys, and we'll catch you on the next Dragon Ball discussion.